This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice. Can you help me give God a hand clap of praise on this day? Amen. We honor the spirit of Christ. We thank God. To all of you, my father's children, my brothers and sisters in Christ and creation, amen. We have made history on today. Can you help me celebrate history in the Eastern Baptist Association? Come on, we can do better than help me give God a hand clap of praise. We honor the spirit of Christ, amen. What a wonderful day it is to be Amen. And this is the class of 2021. Help me thank God for the graduates. Amen. Amen. Now, do you give yourself a hand. Amen. We thank God for you all, my father's children. Amen. We're going to go right into our program with our hymn of celebration. Glory to his name. Amen. Those family and friends, if you want, y'all can slide on up if you so desire. Amen. On uh, this side, you can fill in wherever you like to. Amen. We're all family. Everyone have enough space. And let's sing it. Glory to his name. Amen. Our brother Dean is going to help us and lead us. Amen. As we sing this hymn of celebration. The words are in your program. Amen. You can sing with your mask on. If not, you can mumble. Amen. <laughs> Down at the cross, down at the cross, where my Savior died. Down there for cleansing from sin, I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I'm singing glory. Fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge it today. Plunge it today and be made complete. Come on, church. Glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. One more time, let's sing that chorus. Glory to his name. Come on, church. So on the program, we're going to follow the program. There's no need for me to keep saying anything. We're going to move service right along. But we want to greet you all. You may be seated in the presence of our God. We want to thank God. Amen. Can y'all help me thank God for our host pastors? Amen. Dr. Cedric Easily. Amen. And our other host. Amen. The Reverend Philip McDowell. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. To our Congress family, to our preacher, to all. Amen. To each and every one of you, my father's children, we thank God, even in the absence of our moderator and our entire Eastern family, the leadership, amen, and the membership of our great association, to all of our Congress staff and faculty, to each and every one of you, amen, to my wife and son who's here, and to all of those who are graduating and moving on today, we thank God, amen, and to all of our churches, we greet you with Jesus' joy. This joy we have, the world did not give it, and the world surely cannot take it away. Thank you so much. Amen. It's only right, amen, that we end this, uh, my administration at the Union Baptist Church, amen, and South Hempstead, I'm including both, because amen, for those six years, amen, except for this one incident, we have been here at Union, amen. Thank you so much, Union. 
for all that you do. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask for those who are on the program if you will come in that order. Amen. One verse of scripture, one very simple scripture that we all know, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse number 15. May I encourage us to continue to study that, study, your, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we come at the onset of this celebration to tell you thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. It is a day that you have made, a day that we're glad to see, but a day that we'll never see again. We thank you, Lord, for this the Eastern Baptist Association, and because of your grace and mercy, you have afforded us another opportunity to come together. And so for that, we tell you thank you. We thank you for this Congress of Christian Education that has labored for the past six years in word and in doctrine, and we thank you for this celebration, which is a culmination of the efforts of so many students. Now, Lord, bless this worship experience. Certainly bless everything that will take place, but certainly we ask you to please look upon the preacher on this afternoon. And bless him that he might give us a word directly from you. Please, God, bless our moderator and his administration. And as he is coming to an end, oh, God, as you've been with him for six years, please, Lord, don't leave him alone now. We thank you for all of your many blessings. Please keep us and bless us as only you can. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen to our moderator, the Reverend Gilbert Pickett Sr. Can we put our hands together and just celebrate? Can we do that right now, y'all? Come on, somebody. How many know what prayer can do? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to shout glory. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to our illustrious moderator, the Reverend Gilbert Pickett Sr., our Congress President, Reverend Dr. Vernon D. Shelton Sr., our Vice Moder our Vice President at Large and Commencement Speaker, the Reverend Jeffrey S. Thompson, to our host pastor, Reverend Dr. Sedgwick Easley, to all of our distinguished faculty, and to all of our graduates of the class of 2021 and their families. Let's give God the glory. Today, we, the Congress of Christian Education, the training and educational arm of the Eastern Baptist Association, have gathered here at the Union Baptist Church in Hempstead to formally recognize the academic achievements of those who have successfully completed either the prescribed courses of study within any of the four phases of the Certificate of Progress program of our Track 1, or have completed the required 45 credits of study within the Church Growth and Development Track 2. As an association and as a Congress, we pause today to, to congratulate each and every one of you for your faithfulness, dedication, and commitment to the study of God's Word. As we seek to fulfill the divine mandate in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 to provide relevant biblically sound teaching for the perfection of the saints and to equip disciples for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ you have chosen to seek to increase your own biblical knowledge through the systematic study of the Word of God know that today marks the culmination of your efforts, whether it was to fulfill the requirements of track two or track one, 
Your family and friends are proud of you. Your pastor and congregational family are excited for you. But most of all, God is pleased whenever you make it a priority to know his will for your life through his word. In closing, we encourage you to consider this day not as an end, but as a continuation in your pursuit of quality Christian education. So as Paul stated, let us not count ourselves as having apprehended. Instead, we pray that each of you will continue to press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you, Dean Magwood. We thank God uh, for the scripture and the prayer. We want to have some special welcome and greetings, but before we, they come, we do want you to know that our national dean, the Reverend Dr. Paul Washington Jr., sends his well wishes. He had another service this afternoon, uh, but he did send his well wishes. And also our state dean and state director, the Reverend Dr. Ed Williamson, also uh, sent a letter of congratulations and greetings uh, from our national and our state uh, to, well, to wish Easton well and to let us know, amen, to the Easton, amen, is a model for many other associations, not only in the local association, uh, states and national. And thank you, Easton. Thank you for the five-star staff and faculty, amen, for being an example, a great example for many others to follow. We're going to have, amen, we're going to start with our host pastors, amen, uh, Reverend Dr. Cedric Easley, who's the host pastor of the Union Baptist Church. Uh, then we're going to have Reverend Philip McDowell, who also co-hosted us uh, for all of our sessions. Uh, and then we'll have, we're going to ask if you would stand, we're going to receive our moderator, amen, and after our moderator. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to have our uh, immediate past dean, amen, the Reverend Dr. Patricia Rickenbacker, and then we'll close out. Uh, with the greetings of our moderator. We're going to ask that when our moderator comes that you will all please stand as we show honor and love for our moderator. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Certainly to our president, President Shelton, certainly to our moderator, moderator Pickett, our dean, our preacher for the day, our former uh, certainly our former dean and to all of the Eastern staff and the Congress family. Certainly it gives me great pleasure to stand before you today on this wonderful historic occasion uh, to greet you and certainly to welcome you here uh, to this branch of Zion called the Union Baptist Church. I say to you today, you've been welcome, you are welcome, and you always will be welcome here at the Union Church. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. To our moderator, moderator Pickett, to our uh, president, Dr. Shelton, to our dean, Dr. Magwood, to our former dean, Dr. Rickenbacker, to our preacher for this afternoon, Pastor Thompson, and our host pastor, Dr. Easley, and to all of the faculty, the uh, graduates, and to all who are in, uh, in attendance, either in person or virtually, um, I say good afternoon to you. Um, I want to thank the Congress, particularly under the uh, leadership of our president, Dr. Shelton, for choosing the Union Baptist Church and the South Hempstead Baptist Church as your place of study these past uh, six years. And, uh, and I certainly echo the sentiments of my dear friend, Dr. Easley, who said, uh, you are welcomed. Uh, you have been welcomed, you are welcome, and you'll always be welcome, not only here at Union, but also around the corner at South Hempstead Baptist Church. It is an honor uh, to be a part of this Congress. Uh, one of the things that I have learned is that you can worship God through the study of his word. And that is exactly what we all need to do, to worship God through the study of his word. God bless you, God keep you. Thank you.
God be the glory. Certainly to President Shelton, the moderator Pickett, to our host, Pastor, to Dean um, Magwood, uh, I guess preaching, uh, Pastor Thompson, uh, to the Congress staff, to my husband, Deacon John, to the faculty, to guests, and to families. And last but not least, to those that are completing their cop phase requirements, but um, certainly to our first EBA track two graduates. And again, I say to God be the glory. I just want to say in my greetings, first of all, I've counted an honor even to be remembered or asked to be part of this. The Congress has been a part of my life forever, and I'm grateful to God to be part of this historic event. My greetings today begin with a form of expression of gratitude to moderator Pickett for his support to the Congress down through the years, and of course to President Shelton, who I've had the blessing to serve with as Dean for four years of his tenure and Congress President, and since his faculty and board member, and he's not forgotten me, and I love him for that. And I wanna thank you for your stellar leadership, your commitment, and tremendous vision of EBA developing and simultaneously with being faithful to our COP program, but developing an additional study track um, of church growth and development. Uh, when he came into office, he spoke with me, and he recognized that many of our faithful students, uh, many of you were taking random courses over and over during the year, but didn't really have a pathway to uh, a Christian education diploma like the COP program, but you needed to have some way to work towards some attainable goal that would focus on your personal spiritual development, but it would also focus on equipping you and all of us to be better uh, uh, members and better service persons to God in our local church. And so I thank God, Pastor Shelton, Dr. Shelton, uh, President Shelton, <laughs> for listening to God. Uh, for now, here we are three years later, and to see the result of what you've done, the dean, the faculty, and most importantly, you, all of the students, many of you I know through the years, have worked hard to lead to this particular day. So it is with great joy and honor that I greet you all on this first EBA graduating class of 2021, track two. Give yourselves a hand. And to our COP completions um, for whatever phase you're doing. And as you receive your certificates, certificates today, I want you to understand it's not an end, it's a beginning of the next phase of your continued spiritual growth. That's important. And so I want to leave you with these concluding words of encouragement to President Shelton, to the staff, and to the new incoming administration to keep on teaching and reaching because people are gonna perish without the lack of knowledge that you're providing. And to the graduates, I encourage you to continue. Uh, Pastor Scott read it, 2 Timothy 2.15. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. And then, 2 Timothy 3.14, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced you know those from whom you have learned to follow it, to apply it, and to pass it on to others. And finally, 1 Corinthians, for all of us who have labored on the field, therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor and my labor is not in vain. So to God be the glory, President Shelton, well done. Students, well done, and congratulations, and God bless you. I love you. Come on, come on, let's give God glory. Is there praise in the house? I said, is there a hallelujah in the house? Is there a thank you, Jesus, in the house? You can give him glory as you take your seats on this afternoon as we give obedience to our God and truly we say to our uh, worship leader and to Dr. Shelton, to Lady Shelton, uh, we praise God for our Dean on this evening, uh, Dean Magwood and Lady Magwood, uh, to the preacher of the hour, uh, Pastor Jeffrey Sean Thompson and to our host 
on today. Uh, we praise God for Dr. Easley, and Lady Easley. We're so happy to see uh, former Dean Rickenbacker and my area vice moderator for Queens County in the person of uh, Reverend C. Omar Evans and also, of course, our host and vice at large in the person of Pastor Philip McDowell to all the pastors that are symbol auxiliary leaders, faculty, to preachers of the gospel, and to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, we greet you with the joy of the Lord. And we are happy and honored uh, to be here on this afternoon. Uh, let me start out uh, by talking about uh, the visionary leadership of the Reverend Dr. Vernon Shelter. Come on, let's stand all over this room. Come on, let's give him praise. Let's thank God for his ability uh, to move this Congress uh, from one degree to, to the next. And uh, in the midst of my six years, uh, there were some decisions uh, that I made and appointments that I made that soared. And there was others that flatlined. Amen, somebody. And in the midst of this, we have to come to understand that as much as we try to dot every I and cross every T, uh, some things work better than others. And one of the things that has worked has been the Congress of Christian Education. And to all of you who are graduating on today, you ought to give yourselves a big hand. Uh, this is a milestone, and I'm happy to be here to see for a little while uh, that I do have uh, that in the midst of our 100th year, come on somebody, in the midst of our 100th year, uh, the Congress of Christian Education is having this commencement celebration on today. So again, Dr. Shelton, you have done a job uh, well done, and I'm so glad, I'm so glad uh, that I did not micromanage you, that I cut you loose and uh, let you handle your business uh, because you have done an outstanding job. You along with my brother who sits behind me, uh, Pastor Jeffrey Sean Thompson, I always say Jeffrey Sean, that's just how intimate we are, but make sure you spell the first name right, amen somebody. Uh, so I uh, thank God for him. Let me just say this about Pastor Thompson. Uh, whenever you think uh, you are the smartest person in the association, you better think again. Because I don't care if you are moderator or leader of any auxiliary, you're gonna need somebody who knows more than you in various areas of expertise. And there's been so many days and nights that I have leaned on Pastor Thompson. So I thank God for the fact uh, that I found somebody smarter than me who is working not only behind the scenes, but in front of the scenes in this association. So thank you, Pastor Thompson, uh, for your friendship, and thank you for all your hard work, amen, that you have done. And I must say a word in regards to my little brother, uh, my Pastor Eric Magwood, who we've seen go, grow, and glow, amen. <laughs> We've seen it with our very own eyes. Uh, growing up at the Community Baptist Church in South Elm Zone Park, and even though it was very difficult to ask Dean Vickenbacker uh, to take a back seat after so many years, I felt deep in my heart that Pastor Magwood uh, would be the one that would lead us uh, to higher heights and deeper debts, not taking nothing away from this woman of God because she's on her way to making history. I said she's on her way to making history. Now, 
I'm not a prophet, but she's going to be the next area vice moderator of Nassau County. That's history. So we thank God for Deacon John, my friend and brother and bowling buddy. Amen. We praise God for the Rickenbacker family as we are thanking God again for this commencement. Let me personally thank God for uh, Reverend Darlene Morgan of the Mount Hope Church, <laughs> Sister Carolyn Phillips, two of which who are part of the Mount Hope family who are graduating on today, uh, one of which is part of our Associate Ministers Institute. Come on, let's praise God. That's, that's good news. That's good news to see our Associate Ministers Institute uh, inside of the program. Lastly, let me say thank you. Thank you, Easton, for your prayers, your calls, your text messages. The sickness is real, uh, but God is good, and God is greater. He's greater. I said he's greater than any weapon that could come up against us. He's greater. He's greater. I might not look like what I've been through, and I might not look like what I'm going through. Still got a long way to go. And um, I used to have conversations, still do with one of my members who had a major stroke. As I was talking to her, she would always Dr. Shelton cry. Conversations were upbeat, conversations were happy. But in the midst of it, she would cry. And I understood the physical that based upon where she had a stroke and how she had it, that it controlled her emotions to the point that she could not help but to cry in the midst of the conversations. But then I've come to understand the spiritual. <laughs> that when you think of the goodness of Jesus, and all he has done for you. Some of you I've talked to, I get emotional. I can't help but to cry when I think about how God has bought me, has kept me, and how things could be a whole lot worse. Now, I'm going to make this promise. This is the last time I'm going to say this. I still have a hard time writing my name, but I know my name. I praise God for that. And Brother Deans, you know, growing up every now and again, uh, my mother would send us to a Pentecostal church uh, where they had spoons they would play. And they had washboards they would play on. And Pastor Scott, there was a song they used to sing, the devil thought we had me, but I got away. I want you to know today, I went to three hospitals, stayed in ICU for five days, stayed in a hospital for seven days. The devil thought he had me, but I was the one that got away. Come on, let's thank God for our moderator. Amen. Hallelujah. Is that the best y'all can do? I mean, I know you got your white on and we had a graduation. But can somebody thank God he's still in the miracle working business? Hallelujah. If anybody need evidence that God is still working miracles. Give me a favor, point the moderator and just say evidence, evidence, evidence. 
Thank you, thank you for our leader. Mama. Some people are looking at you because they asking why you doing all that in church. But they have no idea how good God has been to you. Amen. I promise I'm going to move, but do me a favor. Just look at somebody with your mask on. Say, if you only knew. If, if, if you only. If, if. If you only. We, we want our moderator to relax. We gonna move, but can somebody say, moderator, this praise for you. I, you relax. I'm gonna give God praise for you. you. You just take it easy. I'm gonna give God praise for you. Come, come. You go ahead and take it easy. I'm gonna. I bless them for you. That's right. Hallelujah, that's it. Amen, amen. We're going to ask if, amen, we have trustees here that can help us from the association. We want to, to do this quickly, family. We want to be a blessing to the Congress and help us this with some of the expenses, ushers and trustees and Congress trustees, we're gonna need everybody, all hands on deck, who can do this, help us do this quickly. We do have some baskets here. We want to just sow and be a blessing uh, into the Congress of Christian Education. That way we can, uh, you do know with ministry, there occur expenses. And even today, uh, as generous and kind uh, as our host pastor has been, we still want to uh, leave a gift of thank you and cover the expenses of a man having a service amen and i'm not we also going to come back and bless our preacher at a later moment but at this moment we're going to ask if you can just take out the best gift you can as we amen we do have some baskets here uh amen we're going to ask uh amen we need some help we're going to have to pass i don't want them to walk it's possible is it a way we can pass uh, that way they don't have to walk because they can't go back into the is that is that possible is that possible or would it be quicker to walk would, would, would it be faster all right, we're not gonna have a vote at the church. Amen. Whatever. Well, I'm gonna ask the smartest man in the building. <laughs> hey, all right, we're we gonna do this quickly. Amen. Can we stand? We, we'll just walk. We'll just do it fast. We'll just do it quickly. Amen. We don't have the help. Amen. Uh, we'll just do it. I'm sorry. Can someone take this uh, help from those out there easily? One of our trustees, one of. Can I find this thing? Can y'all help him out, please? Thank you so much. We don't want the pastor. Amen. All right, thank you, Brother Anthony. Yes, we can also, you can give uh, through Givelify, the associations Givelify, and then also in the Cash App. Amen. You can give. Uh, if you don't have anything, this smart, well, lean over that smart. Let me hold something. But we need everybody who can to sow. The Givelify is the Eastern Baptist Association. You can just pull up. It's Eastern. Uh, Baptist Forgivelify is Eastern Baptist Association. Yeah, the cash app is EBA1921. Dollar sign EBA1921 if you're given by cash app. Uh, Eastern Baptist Association Forgivelify. May we stand? Can we stand? Amen. Please, we're going to do this in a safe way, in a quick way. Uh, our musicians give us some giving music and we'll get ready to sow. Amen. Let's pray. God, thank you for every gift and giver. We ask that you will bless our seeds 100 fold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's sow. Amen.
Thank you so much. It's already blessed. We already blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your seeds and gifts of love. Amen. It's preaching time. Amen. Amen. And there is a preacher in the house. When we were planning this uh, celebration, this memorial ceremony, I would say memorial, this graduation ceremony, amen, that could have been preachers all across the country we could have invited to come. There were preachers all over our state we could have invited to come. But I wanted to make sure that we had someone who not only supported our Congress, but who have invested and sold into our Congress. Amen. For six years, many times, my name has been called, but I want you to know that behind the scenes, that Pastor Thompson has been working tirelessly. This year in particular, it was, he made sure, he took the lead to make sure we had the virtual Congress in, pla in place. He did, amen. He, he made sure, amen, that we were able to navigate. He's been uh, what every president would want and the vice at large. He's been that handsome. I want you to know, Pastor Thompson, it's not my choice. I don't have the power. But if I did have the say-so, the power to recommend, you would be the president of the Congress of Christian Education. Amen. Because of the work that you put in, because of the knowledge, the skill set you bring, the way that the Amity Baptist Church supports our Congress, you are a blessing. Uh, you have been a blessing to my administration, and you're just a blessing to the body of Christ. And I want to publicly say thank you so much. Amen. For your wisdom, for your sacrifice. Amen. Even when you went through some health challenges, he was still working and helping us in our Congress education. We don't need no introduction. Amen. We all know. Amen. Uh, this pa We all know Pastor Jeffrey Thompson. And he is the pastor of the Amity Baptist Church. He serves in our Congress of Christian Education. He serves in our finance ministry. He's just a blessing to all of us. He's a blessing. And I'm so honored. Amen. Uh, to present him, amen, uh, as he come and prepare us, uh, preach the word of God. We're going to ask Brother Dean, amen, if he prepare us with a short selection. And after that, the next voice you'll be hearing about preacher, amen, the vice president at large, Reverend Pastor Jesse, Jeffrey uh, S. Thompson, amen. Come on, let's thank God for him, amen. After the selection, he'll preach us the word of God. sent his son they called him Jesus he came to love heal and forgive he lived and died to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy it gives. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just 
because he leaves and in one day I'll cross the river I'll fight life's fight no war with me and in us death gives way to victory I'll see the light of glory and I know he lives oh, because he lives I can face tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know he holds my future and life is just the living just because he lives and life is worth the living just because he lives and life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen. Come on and put your hand together. Give God some praise. If you know that because he lives, you can face tomorrow. If because he lives, all fear is gone. You know that life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen. To our moderator who is with us, it was so good to see our moderator. Put our hands together, give God some praise for our moderator. To our vice moderator at large and host pastor as well as the host pastor, Cedric Easley, to the Associate Ministers Division Directors, M. Edward Reed and Lemuel Mobley in his absence, to our immediate past Congress Dean, Sister Patricia Rickenbacker, Dr. Patricia Rickenbacker, we give you thanks and praise for your work across the years, the ways in which you have blessed this Congress. To the Congress staff, to our current Dean, Dr. Eric Magwood, amen. Let's give God some praise for Dr. Eric Magwood. To our president, Dr. Vernon Shelton, you ought to stand to your feet and give God some praise for the work that he has done, the ways in which he has taken our Congress to higher heights and deeper depths. And to all of you, my sisters and brothers, both in Christ and creation, we certainly greet you today in that name that is above every name, that name before which one day every knee is going to have to bow and every tongue is going to have to confess that day that everybody has to say that Jesus is Lord. I wonder if there are two or three people here who know beyond a shadow of a doubt and don't mind saying that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's risen from the dead and he, he is Lord. And certainly to our graduates, the class of 2021, stand to your feet, put your hands together for the class of 2021. And Dr. Shelton, let me say what an honor it is that you have bestowed upon me to be the commencement speaker for this first Congress of Christian Education commencement service. And thank you so much for trusting me with this assignment. I call your attention to a familiar text, Exodus, the 13th chapter, beginning at verse 17. Beginning at verse 17, we find these words recorded. And it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go 
that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war, and they return to Egypt. But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up, harassed not out of the land of Egypt. And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he straightly swore the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and ye shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Succoth and encamped and eat them in the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud and led them the way and by night in a pillar of fire to give light and to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Some of you are looking at me funny. What in the world that text you selected? But this is an educational endeavor, isn't it? And I believe that God had education on his mind when he took them through the way of the wilderness. Would you bow and would you pray? Lord, speak to me and through me that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, there is a former deacon from the Amity Church, Deacon John Stafford. Many of you probably remember him. He and Dottie People serve as the impetus for the sermonic title today, which is Let Him Lead You. Let Him Lead You. Turn to your neighbor and say, Let Him Lead You. Dottie People said that when we sing today, we sing, Where He Leads Me, I Will Follow. I'll go with him, with him, all the way. But she says when she allows her mind to go back to the early church when she was a child, there was a song that the church sang, and they said, um, let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you. Some of you know it. Let Jesus lead you all the way. And I can see Deacon John Stafford in Wednesday night prayer meeting raising that song, Let Jesus Lead You All the Way. And when the song got good to him, Deacon Stafford would say, he's a mighty good leader all the way. Anybody here know beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's a mighty good leader? He's a mighty good leader all the way. And so today as we celebrate this commencement, commencement is upon us, and as we celebrate and salute you for your advances and accomplishments that you've made in your studies. Uh, as we go through and we uh, celebrate you today, we want to encourage you to let the Lord lead you. As I thought about this commencement service, I thought about all the times that I've graduated in my life. There was high school and then there was a junior college where I received my associate's degree. There was my bachelor's degree, and then 13 years later, there was a master's of divinity, and Dr. Shelton, Dr. Easley, Dr. Rickenbacker, I still believe that there's a doctorate degree in me, and so y'all pray for me. But what I remember most was that at that moment of graduation, it felt like freedom. Yeah, perhaps much like the Israelites in our text must have felt Alas, we were no longer bound by studies and by school and no more late night papers, no more cram sessions. I was finally free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was free. And as all of us know, those moments are fleeting. Those moments are fleeting. They're temporary. And I raise that for your consideration today because I want to assure you that even after the course of study that you've engaged in, I want to assure you that God knew everything that it would take to bring you to this point where you are today. And some of you, in fact, many of you uh, see commencement as an end. But as has been already said, commencement is not the end. 
Yes, you've completed a track of study, track two. Yes, you've completed a church growth and development uh, track. Yes, you've completed the Associate Minister's Training Institute. Yes, you've completed a prescribed course of study, a systematic course of study. And over the next few days, I want you just to appreciate your freedom because it is short-lived. It's short-lived because as I found out, learning is a lifelong pursuit. The Bible says study to show yourself approved unto God. And then in fact, Webster, Webster says commencement is not the end, but commencement is defined as the beginning or the starting of something new. And you see, in reality today, what we're celebrating is your new beginning, your new start, your new lease on life. And as you graduate, and as you begin this new phase, this new chapter, this new phase of study, I want to encourage you to let God lead you. For some of you, you'll continue on. There'll be the COP program. There'll be track two. There'll be the advanced track that we're going to have Reverend uh, Shelton develop. And some of you, there'll be Bible school. There'll be college. There'll be seminary where you can do deeper theological reflection and study. Some of you have a graduate degree in your future. But whatever you do, let God lead you. For others, there'll be the challenge of a new position, perhaps, at your church, new responsibilities at your church, but let God lead you. Some of you may not know where you're headed, and others simply are trying to figure it out, but let God lead you, because the truth still remains. An ending of one thing is still a beginning of another. And as we need guidance, as we begin our new path, I'm trying to tell you that God knew the steps that it would take to bring you to where you are today. In other words, God knew the way. But don't just thank God that he knew the way. Thank God that he also showed the way. Like the Israelites were marching into an unknown future. Perhaps you're marching into an unknown future. But like them, you are not alone. God has promised to be with you. In fact, Jason Nelson reminds us that God says, I'm committed to you. I'll never leave you. Nothing in this world could make me walk away. In other words, he won't walk away. And somebody ought to be glad that you serve a God that won't walk away. Trust that he knows the way. Trust that he shows the way. God knew the steps that it would take to bring you to this point in life. God knew the way. But God didn't just know the way, God showed the way. In our text, we see the Israelites leaving Egypt and beginning a new journey with God, a God, a God who was trying to take them out of Egypt, but not only take them out of Egypt, but take the Egypt out of them. God was with them and God led them. After 430 years of bitter bondage in Egypt, God led them out of bitter bondage. I'm trying to tell you, God knew the way, and God showed the way. We see that God directed them the long way around so that they would be safe from the Philistines. Hold on to that. I'm coming back to that. We see that God appeared to them in a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And as you face the uncertain future, you need to keep that image in the back of your mind. Know that God is leading you. Know that God is showing you the way. Yes, the Israelites didn't know where they were going, and you may not know where you're going. You may not know what is next for you in your life, but you don't need to know, because just like they didn't know, you don't need to know, because God knows. Yes, God will lead you. God will guide you. I love this passage because it teaches us that Moses, the leader, had to get in his mind that if he was going to lead the people of God from Egyptian bondage, he had to let God lead him. I love this passage because it shows from the very first footsteps out of Egypt, 
God was showing them where they needed to go, and all they had to do was follow. I think I just said so. God is trying to show somebody where they need to go, and all you have to do is just follow. I, I stopped by to tell you that not only the graduates, as a graduate do you have to follow, but all of us need to learn how to follow the directions of God. I mean, if you're going to lead your family in the way that God wants you to lead your family, you need to let God lead you. If you're going to lead a ministry in the church, you need to let God lead you. If you're going to be any kind of servant in the church, you've got to let God lead you. As pastors, we've got to learn to let God lead us. And the good news for us is that God leads his people. I, I know I'm right about it. You don't mind if I argue my case for a moment. Abraham was called from his holdings in the era of the Chaldeas. Get thee away from thy country and thy kindred unto a land that I will show you. In other words, I will lead you. I will guide you. I will show you. I keep telling you God leads his people. That's why David declared the Lord is my shepherd because he leads me beside the still waters. And as you face your future, know that God already knows the path ahead. God has a path for you. God will lead you. God will guide you. God will order your steps. His word will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. All you need to do is learn how to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will. I said he will direct your path. My Bible says the steps of a good man, the steps of a good woman are ordered by the Lord. Uh, you may think that you make decisions on your own. You may think that you're smart and you're wise. You make logical decisions, but I've stopped by here to assure you, you need to let God, the God who's been with you your entire life, the God who's led you and guided you, you need to let God lead you. You see, I remember when the new millennium came, Reverend Shelton, and it was about time for me to go to seminary. I was living in the Washington, D.C. area, and I wanted so much to go to Howard University, Howard Divinity School. I wanted to go full time, and I struggled with how in the world am I going to quit my good government job, enroll in seminary full time, still live in D.C., and have a place to lay my head at night, and food on the table. I, I struggled with that, the struggle was real, but then I allowed God to order my steps, and God directed me to a place called Indianapolis. My nickname for it was India No Place, because it was still, it was the new millennium in everywhere else, but it was still 1950 in Indianapolis. That was my Egypt, that was my backside of the desert. But I allow God to lead me and direct me, and he led me to Christian Theological Seminary, and where Ed Wheeler was the president of the seminary, Ed Wheeler hails from this very church that we are in right now. And Dr. Wheeler said, we're going to give you a scholarship, a full ride, so I didn't have to worry about a place to sleep and anywhere to eat. He said, not only are we going to give you a full ride, but we're going to give you a stipend so you have some money in your pocket. One of my friends, the Reverend Keith Kitchens, always said to me, Jeff, he said, uh, God honors faithfulness. And I believe that God honored faithfulness and led me and guided me and directed me to Indianapolis. And I moved halfway across the country. But God honored my faithfulness because I trusted God. God has always led his people. We've got to trust him now even more than ever. A few things I noticed about the text, and I'll be out of your way. The first thing I see in the text is that God leads his people whenever it's right for them. I, I, I said God leads his people whenever it's right for them. You see, I wonder how many times the children of Israel cried out to God for deliverance, and God's answer kept coming back, not yet. 
You, you do know that's one of the answers that God gives. God says yes, no, or not yet. Now I wonder how many times we've cried out to God for something. We've petitioned God and pleaded God, and God said not yet. Because God's time is not our time. God's timing is perfect just as his ways and his will are perfect. You know, God might not come when we want him, but you know what grandma and grandpa used to say? He's an on-time God. Yes, you've got to remember that God is an on-time God, and God's timing is never too early or never too late. God leads his people when it's right for them. And I discovered that our ability to wait on God is largely related to how much we know about God and how much we trust God, how, how much we know about God by studying his word and how much we trust God by putting our faith into action. Yes, God leads his people when the timing is right for them. Secondly, God leads his people whenever and wherever it's right for them. You see, not only do we have to trust God's timing, we've got to trust God's direction. We, we've got to trust that God will lead us where we need to go. The, the text tells us that God did not lead the children of Israel through the easiest, the closest route. You see it in the text. God didn't lead them the easiest way to go. And I, I want y'all to know that, yes, there are going to be times where you want to do the easy thing. You want to take the easy way out. But God does not always lead us through the easiest way out. Don't always look for the easy way out. There is some development in your difficulties. There is some strength in your struggles. And God wanted them to struggle because I told you he was trying to take the Egypt out of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What God was doing was trying to develop them and not destroy them. But God did not take them the easy way out. Instead, he led them by a route that would take them toward the Red Sea, essentially putting Pharaoh's army behind them and the Red Sea in front of them. Old preachers used to say they had homicide behind them and suicide in front of them. Yeah, but you know the story. The Bible says they walked across on dry land while Pharaoh's army got drowned. You see, sometimes the direction that God is leading us in doesn't make any sense to us. But we've got to know that if God is leading us in the way that doesn't make sense to us, perhaps there's a reason that God is leading us. There's something greater that God is trying to say is coming. There's something that he wants to teach us. There's something that he wants to show us. Perhaps there's a Red Sea experience coming in your life. Perhaps you are a candidate for a miracle. I told you God didn't take them the easiest way and the closest way because he was trying to develop them. He was trying to mature them. He was trying to strengthen them. And so when you don't find the easy way out, just know that you're a candidate for a miracle. God knew what he was doing. God knew where he was taking them, but they didn't. God knows where you're going. You may not know, but God does. God knows that he was trying to reveal to them his power and his might so that the world could see. God knew it, but they didn't. He knew that he was about to deliver them in the most uh, spectacular way. God knew it, but they did. He knew that it was the only way that they would experience something that they would not be able to take credit for themselves. They would know if it was nobody, it was nobody but the Lord. I'm almost done. But there are times that you will think, and some of you will dare say, God, this doesn't make sense. My word to you is just trust him and let God lead you. God, this doesn't look right, doesn't feel right. Just trust him and let God use you. Uh, this, this, this doesn't make any sense. People are going to say I'm crazy. Just trust him and let him lead you. 
just trust God and go in the direction that God is leading you because God is going to lead you in the way that is best for you. He's got your best interest at heart. In fact, there's somebody here that can testify that's what he's doing right now. Is God leading anybody right now? Is God guiding anybody right now? Is God ordering your steps right now? It might not be a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, but God is leading you. And I'm done when I tell you that he's leading you through his word. So study his word. He's leading you through the power of his spirit. So make sure that the spirit overflows. He's leading you by spiritual and God-filled preachers and professors. He's leading you through spirit-filled leaders who aren't afraid to speak truth to power. He's leading you through those who will challenge you to go to the next level. Yes, God. God is leading you. I don't know about you, but I believe that God is leading us. Won't he do it? Won't he lead you? Won't he guide you? Won't he strengthen you? Won't he order your steps? I don't know about you. But I'll go to my seat when I tell you. I can hear my Savior calling. I said I can hear my Savior calling. Can you hear your Savior calling? And so you've got to declare in your heart. You've got to resolve in your spirit. Make up in your mind. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll go with him. With him all the way. God bless you and congratulations graduates of 2021. Come on, let's thank God for Pastor Thompson. Amen. Thank God for the word of God. Amen. We're standing. Amen. If you're physically able, we're here. Amen. Maybe there's someone visiting or maybe someone here that don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We don't want to miss an opportunity to offer, amen, uh, Christian education. We're going to offer Christian education, but we also want to offer the gift of salvation. Amen. Amen. If that's you, man, woman, boy, your girl. You said, I'm not saved. If you have not confessed Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, we offer you a moment. Amen. Give us your hand, but give God your heart. Amen. Is there one today who said, I'm not saved. I want to be saved. I want to get to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, let me ask you another question. Amen. If you save and you know you save. Amen. If you know Christ and Christ know you, can you help me give God a hand clap of praise? Amen. 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 I want to do this quickly. Y'all know even though we're at a commencement, we're still Baptist Church. Amen. I want us to quickly, we want to be a blessing to the preacher. Is that all right? Our moderator left the gift of $100 for our preacher, and I want to do the same. Amen. We're going to ask that you would do the best that you can. Preachers, you know what we've been blessing other preachers with all year. We want to do this quickly. Hey, amen. I need some help. Uh, we need some help. We want to be a blessing to Pastor Thompson, who's so, so, so. And we're getting ready after we give and be a blessing to our preacher, ushers, or anybody. We need all the help. We get anybody who's willing to help us. Our finance team, come on. Hey, amen. We need y'all help again. We want to sow. Amen. To be a blessing to our preacher. Amen. Come on. Let's do that. And we're going to prepare. Amen. Amen. Or oh, the cash app, what's your, give me your cash app. Oh, your cash app. JST, he can't figure it out, but my cash app is, no, I'm sorry, what is it? What is it? What is it? Yeah, dollar sign JST816. Dollar sign JST816. If you want to be a blessing, if you're watching live, or if you want to use cash app in the building, you can be a blessing, amen. If you're giving, Dollar sign JST is on the screen. Uh, amen. If you're giving by Givelify, you can give to the Eastern Baptist Association. We'll make sure he get it. Amen. We're gonna. We're sorry to make your walk. I promise. Uh, if you are uh, visited, this will be the last time you walk. Uh, graduates got one more walk. Can we stand all over the sanctuary as we be a blessing to our preacher? We're gonna ask ushers. You can lead them from the rear as we prepare to give. Amen. Can we stand? Amen. You can lead them. Amen.
Thank you for every gift and giver. We ask that you bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your gifts of love. And thank you so much for the word of God. And we've come now to that portion of service where we want to honor the certificates. Amen. For those who have completed. Amen. The various phases. And I want you to know that we're not just celebrating our Congress, Christian Education, uh, Track 1 or Track 2, but today we're also celebrating the Minister, Associate Ministers Institute, amen, and Bishop Reed is here, and we'll call him soon, and we'll be able to thank you so much, uh, Easton, amen, we're making history on today, amen, we are honoring and multi-phases, amen, but we want to begin, amen, we're going to ask if our Associate Assistant Dean uh, Olita uh, will come. She's going to come. She's going to come and she's going to uh, lead us in the first portion because we do have uh, individuals from our COP program who will receive recognition. Amen. The man will. We're going to ask if you would uh, you, you can come down. Good evening. It brings me great pleasure to recognize two of our graduates for the COP program. The first one we're going to recognize is Evangelist Ernestine Magwood. She completed phase two. Amen. This certificate is being presented to Evangelist Ernestine Magwood for your completion of phase two of the Certificate of Progress program. Amen. By the Division of Christian Education, Accreditation and Credentials of the Sunday School Publishing Board of the National Baptist Convention USA Incorporated. Given this 27th day of June in the year of our Lord 2021. The second one, unfortunately, she's unable to be here, but we are extremely proud of her. That's Sister Gladys Warren. She completed <laughs> phases one through phase four, and she did receive her diploma. That deserves recognition. <laughs> I'm going to ask if we have a member of our Congress family, a faculty who has served in many capacities. She is nothing but full of wisdom, 
and I'm going to ask if she would assist me, assist me in this portion. Dr. Dorothy Simmons, can you come? I want you to assist me in this portion. Amen. I want you to come. Brother Dean, are the candidates for the Church Growth and Development Program, have they completed all necessary requirements that make them eligible to, for, to grow, make them eligible to receive their diploma or certificate of completion? Yes, they have. Amen. Will you please call their names so we can reward them their certificates? Amen. Amen. Our first candidate is Michelle Armstrong. <laughs> Minister Carol Buchanan. <laughs> Reverend Curtis Brown. <laughs> Reverend LaCrista Brown. <laughs> Sister Patricia Brown. Elijah Carraway. Eula Claiborne. Glennis Cook. Wyatt Cook. <laughs> Minister Denise Davis. <laughs> Brother Raymond Davis. Sister Charmaine Douglas. <laughs> Reverend Paula Gamble. <laughs> Glendora Ravenel. Get it. <laughs> Elaine Green. <laughs> Michelle Griffin. Diane Harris. <laughs> Regina Hill. <laughs> Dr. Rosalind Johnson. <laughs> Bernice Jones. <laughs> Loma Jones. Eleanor Kirkland. <laughs> Reverend Randy Lomax. <laughs> Evangelist Ernestine Magwood. Lady Sharon Magwood. Aniska McClendon. Minister Janie McFarlane. Reverend Darlene Morgan. Sandra 
Sandra Panic. Carolyn Phillips. Brenda Pitney. Eleonora Porter. Terry Porter Louder. Charlotte Savage. Nancy Scott. Lady Laprina Shelton. Reverend Sherelle Scott. Renee Sumter. Essie Tony. Gladys Warren, she's not here, but we recognize her. Reverend Janie West Mays. Pamela Graves Williams. Hilda Wiggins. And Evangelist Ebony Witzel. Come on, let's celebrate those graduates, amen. Let's celebrate those graduates, amen. Listen, come on, we can, let's celebrate yourself. You are part of history, amen. You worked hard, amen. Listen, it's, it may not be a master's or doctor's degree, but you have, it's, it's, you worked hard for this. You went to class, you spent hours, amen. And we honor you on today, but we're not finished yet. The Lord blessed our moderator with the vision, uh, even the poor, this, uh, to bring in Associate Ministers Institute. And at this time, we're going to call Bishop Mel Reed, amen. And they want to reward and sacrifice. He'll talk about those on Associate Ministers Institute, amen. Thank you so much. Uh, Brother President, we are delighted that you offered to include the Associate Ministers Institute in this historic event in the life of our association. The Institute has been designed as a training and teaching arm to assist pastors with their Associate Ministers. And we've had a number who have come through the Institute, some who have tiptoed through and uh, kept going um, because they didn't think there was a need to be a part of the Institute. Then there were others who have been a part of the Institute who have been consistent in their participation and in their attendance. And those persons we want to, at this first recognition, recognize their achievements of being a part of the Institute. And so as I call your names, we do want to give you a certificate to recognize your progress in the Institute. And we do hope that um, as administrations change hands, that the Institute would continuously be a part of the work of our association. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
uh, but the president's going to help us uh, to give out the certificates. As I call your name, please come forward. Minister Clarence Akers, Jr. Minister Kevin Volbright. Evangelist LaDonna L. Clark. Minister Denise Davis. <laughs> Minister Jane Fennell. <laughs> Elder Lester Mackey. Minister Minnie Mobley, is she here? If not, there. Reverend Dr. Vanessa Guest. She's not here. Reverend Pamela Hicks. One of the special persons within the Associate Ministers, Reverend Darlene Morgan. And last but not least, Reverend Kimberly A. Wilson. Thank you all. Amen, amen. Let me, before we go, I want to say to our moderator, thank you for this appointment six years ago. I want to say to all of our area, our vice presidents, my vice at large, I want to say to our Congress staff, to the faculty, and I want to say to the delegates of Easton, thank you for allowing me to be your president. And thank you to our deans. Amen. Thank you, Dean Rickenbacker and Dean Magwood for just, and all of our associate deans and staff for just putting up with me. I'm not always, I'm, I recognize I'm not always easy to work with because I want to make sure things are done decently and in order. Sometimes I can be pushy. Sometimes I could just overdo it. I, I realize my faults, but I do it with a heart and a spirit of excellence. For six years, I tried to serve you the best I could. I tried to give you my all. I tried to represent you with excellence. But as I come down from this mountain, this is officially my last act of business. 
in this capacity. For six years, I realized that I was not able to do it alone. I had a great team. But there is this one member of our team who kept me together. Amen. 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 Planned our agendas, planned our meetings, sent out all the correspondence. Kept me going right when I was supposed to go right. And had to come and get me when I was going left. <laughs> Kept me updated on meetings that I planned. <laughs> and as much as I wanted to have this graduation, this commencement ceremony, it would not have been possible without the hard work of Karen Massenburg. Listen, let me tell you, and I promise, during the pandemic, we know what we wanted to achieve, but there were many days and nights where Karen went through all the attendance sheets, made sure she emailed everyone kept a transcript for everybody, called and followed up with everyone, even up until last night, y'all. Cameron, I want to say thank you so much. This would not have been possible without all the work and dedication. You sacrificed work time. We called you at work. We called you after work. Thank you for your love and dedication to the Congress of Christian Education, to this president. I can say I am blessed, we are blessed because of your dedication and your faithfulness. Amen. And it's my prayer that whoever serves in this seat next have someone just like you. If they smart. <laughs> Can I, I just have this for you. I just want to say thank you. This is just a gift. Just, just for me to say thank you. We love, I love you, Karen. Thank you so much. Easton, thank you. I love you, and you can't do anything about it. Amen. Pastor Thompson is going to come and close us out one more time. Congratulations, Easton family, associate ministers, track one, track two. Thank you so much. We made history. Come on, y'all. We made history. It's on you, man. Amen, amen. Once again, let me thank you, Dr. Shelton, uh, for bestowing this honor upon me. Give God some praise one more time for Dr. Shelton, who's did a tremendous job across these six years. Uh, let me see. I got one thing to say, and then we're going home. Um, Where's Roz? Where's Roz? Right there. Where? Oh, stand up, Roz. <laughs> Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen. It's so good to see Roz on today. As, as good as it was to see the moderator today, I'm happy to see Roz today. Everybody, uh, Shelton, she tried to make me kiss her on Friday but I sent her to the hospital instead. <laughs> Some of y'all will get that later. Amen. God bless you. So good to see you. Stand up. Let's prepare to go home. <laughs> Let's look to the Lord. Lord, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard, but most of all for what our hearts have felt. Indeed, we've been in your presence. Now, as we depart this place, go with us and stand by us. Lead us and guide us. In your name we pray. The church said amen.